She's an award-winning writer, a hunting guide, archery and rifle instructor, keynote speaker, and all-around outdoors woman who encourages you to get outside, hunt, fish, shoot, and savor all that life has to offer. And now, here's your host, Mia Anstein. Hello, hello, it's Mia visiting with you again. Welcome back, or if it's your first time here, welcome, welcome. I hope that you will stay for the entire episode. Today, it is a nice, cool Colorado day. We did get a little bit of snow. I'm actually up in the Denver area, and we had snow up here. I'm told that down in the southwest, we didn't really receive much. So, I'm enjoying the wintertime wonderland up here. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk to you about a couple different things. One of them, since it's chilly out, and since a few people have been experiencing some darn chilly weather, I want to talk to you about wintertime skincare. I'm also going to be chatting with you about the big game draw process. And this is an issue because the clock is ticking and it's almost time to be done with the application period in New Mexico and Colorado's opens soon. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. This winter, stay warm from head to toe with WSI Sports' heater gear layers. Use Leah's affiliate code LLCO10 at WSISports.com and get 10% off your order. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI Sports is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. That code, once again, LLCO10 for 10% off at WSISports.com. Okay, so today I am not really sharing a fun fact because I have something that I think is kind of cool and exciting. It's something that you might like. I love to read and I don't know if you do but some people don't like to read books anymore and they would rather listen which may be why you're over here listening to the Mac Outdoors podcast. If you are interested I have a giveaway and I want to share it with you. My friend Liz Lazarus she's an author and she's written some books that I literally like read one of them in one day it was just an intense thriller and if you want to see my review about it go over to my YouTube channel it's under Mia Anstein and you can find my book reviews for her books over there but she is doing a giveaway right now and you have the opportunity to win an audiobook so if you like listening to podcasts you may like to listen to audiobooks and to listen to a thriller could be pretty darn exciting i think and so i want to share that with you if you are interested in signing up go to the website is called mia.limited/win plea so the audiobook is called plea for justice the website is m i a dot l i m i t e d slash w i n p l e a mia dot limited slash win plea mia dot limited slash win plea plea for justice is just a fabulous book i don't want to do any spoilers on it as i said you can watch the review on youtube and i hope that you'll enter for a chance to win an audio copy of liz lazarus book plea for justice wonderful book super cool and such a thriller today we are going to start out talking about some wintertime skincare and i want to talk to you about a product that i have found that has been really great for me if, if you're, it's your first time here or if you don't know and haven't heard in an episode yet i live in southwest colorado in the rocky mountains we have super dry climate here and in the winter it's a super dry cold so not a damp humid cold and you definitely get chafed or chapped skin if you spend very much time in the outdoors. So I wanted to share some skincare that I've been using. It is not sponsored at all. I just want to share this. What I have been using is CeraVe's Healing Ointment. This stuff is just 
wonderful. I mean, it's a petroleum type product, but it also has hyaluronic acid in it and ceramides. And so this isn't an anti-aging talk. This is a protect your skin talk. I did mention in the last episode about hats and why I wear hats and it's to protect my skin. So I'm talking today about protecting your skin. This is uh, kind of like a Vaseline, but with these other ingredients that are really helpful to hydrate your skin and to help restore your skin if you have gotten some windburn. So if you're out hiking or hunting or doing anything in the outdoors, maybe feeding cattle at six in the morning in the wind and cold, your skin might get chapped and this is really going to help a lot. It is fragrance free. So hey guys, if you're a man that's listening, it's something that you might want to wear as well. It's really great for your hands. If you get those hangnails that crack and you get those cracks in your fingers, which I used to get until I started using this, you might want to give it a try. So that is called CeraVe Healing Ointment. And I will have a link to this in the show notes. If you're interested, you can go check it out. And I just wanted to share that with you. I also wanted to talk to you about wintertime skin care and some things that you can do to protect your skin. I do visit an esthetician on occasion and probably not as often as maybe some people would like or as often as I would like, but it is quite pricey. And so I try to do things to just protect my skin and take care of my skin as I go. After your skin is wind burned or chapped, you can do some things. And, and my esthetician told me about putting coconut oil on your face. Look for 100% organic coconut oil. And you can p- apply that to your face and then do a face steam. I have a little steamer and with that steamer, it helps me keep my face from getting too close to the hot moisture to the steam so that you don't accidentally burn your face. That's something you can do. If you have a sauna, you can put that on and steam and that'll help your skin start to hydrate and heal. When you do that, you just put a thin, thin layer on and then you just do that steamer, you know, for five minutes or 10 minutes and You could also, if you don't have a steamer, what you do is you put some hot water in a pot and then you can put your face above that pot for five to 10 minutes. Or you can simply put that on your face and when you get in, take a nice warm shower, you can get the steam from the shower. So those are all ways that you can do a steam to your face. When you are out and about, I do recommend that you cover up. And as I said, I wear hats to help protect my skin. I don't wear a hat to be cool. I do wear a hat to be warm, but also to put shade on my face so that my face isn't getting any harsh sun rays on it. And hopefully that will help a little bit. I do like to put sunscreen on. I put sunscreen on every day, whether I'm headed outside or if I'm just sitting in front of the computer. And the sunscreen that I have found for my skin tone, and it's a mineral sunscreen, that's something that I suggest is find a mineral sunscreen. But what I use is Physical Fusion UV Defense, and that's an SPF 50. I do reapply it periodically throughout the day. Sunscreen is really a must, but the sunscreen is not going to stop you from getting windburned and sunburned. Staying hydrated is extremely important. Another product that I found is the CeraVe sunscreen, and that one, it's just called sunscreen, I believe. It's also a face lotion. It is a little bit tinted, so is the skin SkinCeuticals, and they are a little tinted because with the mineral sunscreen, we maybe years ago, you saw like the lifeguards with the blue cream on their face. It does kind of give you that blue tint and so with the tint with the pigment or the coloration in the sunscreen it does help to have you not be blue you can actually wear this and go out in public and not look like you're an alien or something like that the CeraVe that I really like to use as well it's way less expensive than the skin SkinCeuticals and it's something as I said I'll put some links for you here but that one also has ceramides and it has niacinamide which are both good ingredients to help nourish your skin as well as protect it so make sure that you cover up 
make sure that you hydrate your skin and make sure that you put on some sunblock. That is really important. If you get wind burned and you end up having to come home and help heal, as I said, that CeraVe healing ointment it is wonderful. It's great for your face or your hands or body. I think you might like that a lot. If you have questions, please reach out to me. You can email me. The email address is contact at miaanstein.com. Or thank you to those of you who have followed me on social media or have reached out to me on social media. You can find me. Just look up Mia Anstein. I am on most social media outlets. If you don't see me on a social media outlet where you are and you think I should be there, let me know. I will try to be wherever I need to be. Right now, the major ones are probably the priority because it seems like all kinds are popping up all the time and it's hard to build a crowd at some of these new places so if you have tips on that let me know because we are all learning and sharing and I want to help you and I hope that you'll help me too for the love of the outdoors open spaces and mountains shop www.mia.limited slash one the Mac Outdoors Mountains Are Calling series of apparel is perfect for you or your loved ones. Support the channel and shop now. www.mia.limited slash one. All right, so some of you have had questions about hunting and how to get started hunting and so forth. And so right now, I want to talk to you about how to apply for the big game draws in Colorado and New Mexico. I'm not telling you about every state because we could probably spend days. And these two states are ones went back when I was guiding and outfitting full time. I did hold outfitter license in New Mexico as, and I still have one in Colorado, but they are states that I'm very familiar with. And I still hunt in both of these states on a regular basis. So I do have a lot of knowledge. If you have questions that I don't answer today, as I said before, please reach out, email me, contact at miaanstein.com or message me on social media. And I'll be happy to give you what answers I can. Before I get going, I want to tell you a great place to get your answers is actually from the organizations. New Mexico Game and Fish, that is how you find New Mexico. They are the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. So just Google that or whichever search engine you use, look it up and you can find contact information there. I wanna let you know that. And then Colorado Parks and Wildlife, look them up, Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They have a lot of online resources as well as their 800 number where they have customer service representatives that are very helpful. They can help answer all of your questions. That's what they're there for, and they don't mind any question. You know, there's no dumb question. Ask before you make mistakes, that kind of deal. So I just wanted to start out saying that. And then I want to talk to you about deadlines. There is a bit of urgency because the deadline for New Mexico big game applications and big game, this is Barbary sheep, bighorn sheep, deer, elk, ibex, javelina, pronghorn, and oryx. The deadline to submit that application is March 17th at 5 p.m. So make sure that you do that. If you've hunted in New Mexico before, make sure that you submit your harvest report. You cannot get if you're drawn you don't get to get that license if you didn't submit your harvest report from the year before so make sure you do that and before you can apply if you've never applied before you have to have hunter education right now because of covid you actually can do a lot of hunter education online or you may check your date of birth, you may be able to uh, get an exemption and still be able to apply for a hunting license. As I said, visit those websites and see how that works. Colorado does have a crossover for military. If you are a retired military, you can go in and you can test out of hunter education. So that, that's an idea. It's a way to try and apply and get going. As someone who is also a voluntary hunter education instructor, I do recommend doing the in-person class if that is available in your area. If you have questions about hunter education, message me or get in touch with the state's agencies.
so why do we apply? We apply because we are conservation minded and both New Mexico and Colorado, they follow the North American model of wildlife conservation. And that means that we don't just go out and hunt. We don't just go out and shoot any old animal. We have to pass criteria such as hunter education and then we have to buy a hunting license and we have to only hunt the animal that our hunting license is good for. The big game hunting license, it's valid for one animal. And there is an exception for maybe mountain lion and stuff like that. In New Mexico, you can get two depending on the unit and stuff like that. So I'm talking, I'll, I'll use elk specifically for this because I do have so many people ask me about elk hunting. So we're going to talk about elk hunting. When you apply for your license, you get your license and it's good for one animal. You can't hunt more than one and then your hunting license will tell you whether it's for a male or a female or if it's either sex. If I'm out hunting and I have an either sex tag, if I'm only seeing cow elk, I might be able to shoot a cow elk. There you go. Um, one thing with the draw application process, you're going to need to do a little bit of research and decide what area or hunting unit, game management unit, of the state that you're going to want to hunt. And the states are broken up into game management units so that they can manage the population of the animals in those hunting units. This is what we do. We don't just shoot every animal anywhere we see it. There are specific areas and that way we can make sure that the populations are sustained over time. For Colorado and for New Mexico, you will have to purchase a game hunting license before you purchase your hunting license. And in Colorado, there's a qualifying license would be a small game license or maybe a turkey hunting license. If you live in the state, that's great. Or if you wanna travel over the springtime to come check out the state, you can purchase that turkey hunting license. They do have a draw in Colorado for turkey hunting, but they also have over the counter areas where you can just get that license at any time. For New Mexico, you'll be able to tick a box and buy that game license. It actually will not let you out of their queue without giving you a notification that you need a game license for whatever you're applying for. When we're looking at hunting units, you're going to have to look for hunt codes. So something you want to do before you actually get in to apply is go to the state's website and look at their regulations guide. We used to call these proclamations, but now they're called regulations guides. And in there, you're going to find hunt codes. The hunt code is based on the species you're hunting, whether it's a male or a female, what area of the state you're hunting in, and the method of take. And the method of take is whether you are hunting with a bow, muzzleloader, or a rifle. So it's going to be separated out that way decide before you apply if you want to archery hunt or decide if you want to rifle hunt and you're going to be looking for those hunt codes. If you additionally know the area where you intend to hunt, you're going to want to look at rifle hunting in unit 21. And I'm just using 21 because it's the number that popped into my mind right now. <laughs> but So I want to rifle hunt in unit 21 for elk. So I will go and look for that hunt code for that unit and then see what's available. And then when you're looking at what's available, you're going to additionally see the dates. And you can select in those dates. You can apply for a first choice and a second choice. And if you decide you want to apply for more choices than that, they do have the slots, so go for it. I do recommend applying for two choices, so check that out. I mean, if you don't get your first one, you may get lucky and get the second one. In Colorado, if you do not receive your first choice, you can opt to get a leftover or over-the-counter tag sent to you and they do have a map on, of the units and which ones are limited draw and which ones are over the counter. They have that in the regulations brochure. When we're looking at that, the over the counter is something where I can just go into any licensed retailer and I can purchase. I don't have to apply. So those areas are not limited. A benefit to applying to a limited area is they're generally 
are better quality animals and less hunting pressure. That means you're going to come across less hunters out in the field. So those are things to keep in mind. This is a lot that I'm giving to you right now. And as I said, if you have questions, give those state agencies a call. They answer questions all the time and they are happy to help. And if you have questions that you just want to ask me specifically, I would be happy to answer those as well. Once you have applied, you're going to get confirmations and receipts of your application. The states will later notify you of whether you have drawn or not, and they will mail you your hunting license, and then you're ready to go. In a future episode, I will be talking to you about things to do after you apply because you definitely need to do some preparation to get ready in case you do draw your hunting license or if you want to just go purchase an over-the-counter tag then you you'd still want to prepare so in a future episode we will be talking about that I will be talking about exercises hunting gear scouting I will talk about firearms I will talk about archery and I will be happy to talk about anything that you message me about and ask. So be sure and let me know. I hope that you have a great week and I hope that you will subscribe before you go. If you haven't already, if you can pop over to iTunes and give me a review, if that's where you're listening, I would appreciate that. It definitely helps the podcast and I'm happy that you're listening This is so fun to share with you. And as I said, to learn together is quite the collaboration. Be sure to head over to mia.limited slash win plea and enter that giveaway for that thriller audio book. I will talk to you next time. Hey, this is Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, host of the Armed Lutheran Radio Podcast, reminding you that the podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the great content at selfdefenseradio.net.